Okay, welcome back guys. In this video I want to show you how to model this battery cell thing with the wire and the box. There's some really nice modeling techniques in, in Maya you can use to really do this really quickly. So I'm just going to quickly explain what this object is. It's the shape of a battery, a normal battery you'd find in, in any home appliance. This thing at the top is going to be a light. I haven't modeled, uh, textured it yet. I'm going to do it in the next video. Um, this light is going to emit a glow that so we can see the actual object from a distance. There are sockets at the bottom of the object where we can connect wires. The wires are hooked into the ground so they don't move everywhere and the box at the end connects the wire to the underground network where we can join our solar panels. Okay, So this is the place where the solar panels store the energy. And it's the first of one of many creations I'm going to do in this, in this little series for our game. So without um, wasting any more time I'm going to go into Maya and show you guys how to model this. Okay, so it's really simple to do actually. It might look complex, but you can you can actually bang out a quite a few nice objects in Maya in a relatively short amount of time. So I'm straight away I've done that too too short. Um straight away I'm gonna go into a face mode, get my brush and select all these faces at the top. And all we need to do here is extrude a few times. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and just shrink it a little bit in all axes. And then do the same two more times to make a like a rounded um, curve at the top, so bring it down a bit, do the same, and straight away we've got our bullet or battery shape at the top, just going to make it a bit smaller, okay that's cool, let's, get, let's go to edit mesh, insert edge loop, I'm going to put one here, so if I go to a face mode and select the first face, I'm going to press Q to get rid of my axes, uh, my pivots, and if I hold shift and double click the next face the whole ring of faces are selected on this object. Nice little trick so um, let's extrude these out. I'm going to go into a world mode and just scale it scale it in all directions and also bring it down a tad in the in the Y. Okay that's cool and if anything I've done that a bit too much I'm just going to bring it back a bit and again I'm going to extrude this again so insert edge loop tool let's do it a bit halfway this time so the same thing, select the first face and the rest, extrude, weld mode, bring it out and that's done. So I want to make these a bit thicker so I can go into a side view and uh, as you can see the vertices are not very aligned. So I'm going to bring them down and bring these ones down, a bit thicker now, that's cool. Okay, let's bring this up. So it's not going to be exactly the same as the uh, Unity one, but the same techniques will be used. All right, so I'm just going to make this a bit, a bit taller. Get the edge loop tool out again, and I'm going to make an edge loop around here. So I'm going to create the platforms to connect our lights to the actual cell. So again, I'm going to select these, the ring of faces, and extrude them out one more time. So let's bring them out a little bit. Oh, I've done a bit too much. Maybe that'll do, and in the other direction as well. So, okay, that's fine. Um, the next thing I need to do is create some holes in this platform so we can join the light to it. So I want to do it in thirds. So probably one there, probably one there. I'm just going to eyeball this one there, maybe. No, not far enough. Maybe there. Okay, that looks fine. So with all three of them selected, let's just extrude inwards. So I'm just going to drag these inwards and now all of them have that's been applied to all of them. Okay, and let's extrude again. This time I want to kind of shrink it. So I'm going to default to the center position here and then just move them inwards. And now as you can see all of them come inwards. So that's a nice little trick as well. Okay, so I'm going to do the next thing individually. So I'm going to extrude this face again. I'm just going to make a small square in the middle and then press G and then bring it out if I can select my pivot by the way guys you can um, press the plus and minus keys to make these bigger and smaller might come in handy so yep that's the first one and now when it's smaller again okay and uh, extrude again bring it down extrude and bring it outwards so I'm going to do it for one more bring it down and out 
Okay, so now we've got three objects to connect the light to, and um, I want to make this. I want to make this a bit shorter, but the pivot points aren't facing the right direction. So the way to tackle this, guys, is to select the face and then press Command Shift or Control Shift, I guess, if you're on Windows. Right click and then instead of a world mode, go to a normal average mode. Then the vertices, the pivot will point the same direction as your uh, normals, which is always outwards from that particular face. So then we can shrink it very easily. Okay, so the same thing here, shrink it down a bit. And that one's fine, I think. So to create the ring, I'm going to go to a top view. Okay, save this out. I'm going to create polygon and I think it's a torus. So let's let's go right to the center of this. Okay, let's bring out the ring. Okay, so they're a bit small, but never mind. Um okay, let's make it a bit thicker. Okay, that's cool. Let's bring it up. Bring it up and connect it to our objects. Okay, so my torus isn't very thick, so we can jump into the inputs, input nodes and uh change the radius maybe and okay, that's cool. And now I don't think we need to edit the joining connections because they're all intersecting the torus. Okay, so let's just go into an object mode and soften all the edges firstly. Okay, that's cool. I think that's a bit too um, thick actually. I'm just going to bring that and I'm going to change the radius to make it a bit smaller. Okay, so that's that. The next thing to do is uh, create the little sockets at the bottom. Let's get the insert edge loop tool out again and I'm going to make one around here and let's just do one here. So again I'm going to do the same thing we did at the top really. So I'm going to select three faces then if we leave two of them then select another three, leave two, select another three and the same thing, ah okay maybe we need to select three, leave three three, one two three, one two one, two, three. Perfect. That's a pretty good guess, actually. And uh, okay, let's go to extrude face. Let's default to the middle position. So I'm just going to click this to go in the world mode, and I'm just going to extrude down. And it's as simple as that, guys. We we've just um, kind of extruded in socket ports for our um, wires, and uh, that's pretty cool. I'm just going to. Go into a vertex and shrink this down a bit. Okay. All right. I'm pretty happy with that object. So let's just double check everything. See if everything's smooth and it looks pretty smooth. Okay. Not exactly the same as the one in Unity, but it does exactly the same thing. So let's go to show grid to remove the grid. So we don't need these faces. They'll never show in our game, and they're just a waste of uh, geometry in our Unity game. Um, so let's just get our brush out. Let's make the brush a bit bigger. Oh, let's go to a face mode and delete all of these faces. Delete. Oh, okay, I deleted the vertices. Okay, let's go back to a face and just select them. Okay. So all of these faces are deleted now and uh, is there anything else we can delete? Probably. Um, I'm going to go into a object mode and um, Okay, let's set up a new layer. So if we go to a new layer, I'm just going to call this one light. So we're going to put our light in this layer. Save. Okay, so we've got our light selected. We can say add selected objects and now I'm going to totally like remove this layer. We'll just make it a uh, wireframe. So we can also remove these faces here on the edge of our um, components connecting the light. We just don't need them. So when it comes to texturing, things will be a bit easier. All right, I think that's what we need to do now. So let's just bring that back. Okay. So let's just yeah, we can select it now. That's good. So moving on, I want to create the wire, and there's a really awesome way we can do that with curves. I'm going to bring the grid back. Show grid. Let's move this whole thing out of the way. Right. What we need to do, guys, create. And there's an awesome tool in Maya 2013, it might be in Maya 2012, I'm not very sure. It's called Pencil Curve Tool. Okay, so if we're in the perspective mode, we can draw on the grid or the same point zero, and we can just like squiggle the wire, and boom, we've created a curve. Okay, and then we can edit the points if we wanted to. Um, edit point, we can select the points, bring them up, bring them down. 
So before I create the mesh, I'm just going to go into an object mode and move this out of the way so it doesn't get in our way. I'm just going to move it across here. Okay, so to create the wire, we can firstly create another cylinder. And that is way too detailed for our wire. I don't want it to take up loads of poly. So subdivision division axes, let's maybe do eight. Maybe eight's good enough. Um, we'll soon see anyway. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees in the X and kind of line it up. Okay, so I just realized, guys, we need to start at the at the beginning of the curve, not at the end. So all we need to do is rotate the cylinder and bring it to the beginning of the curve to begin with. Okay, let's see if we can do this without messing up. Um, so the cylinder's at the beginning of the curve facing in the right direction. We can go into a face mode, select all of the faces, press Q to get rid of my um, pivot points. Alright, then we can shift select the curve and then go to edit mesh, extrude. Bam, so we've extruded one division to the end of the curve and if we go to our divisions in our extrude middle mouse drag and as you can see the more divisions we have the more the curve is created and uh, the middle mouse drag stops at 25 so I'm just going to type in maybe 50 double that yeah that looks alright um, I'm going to go back into my cylinder 2 and change the radius put it right down okay so that's about right I think there's a bit of an issue here let's just uh, okay let's just select them and I think that'll do. So I'm just going to rotate this a bit because um, I didn't line it up very well to begin with. Let's just go back to a weld mode select all these vertices, bring them in. Okay, no, I didn't select one. That'll do guys for this example I think. Um, okay, so we've got our wire, now we want to connect it to the object itself, the actual cell and to do that we can firstly bring the mesh away from the curve and let's try and connect it to this one here around the corner so let's bring it up okay but as you can see the 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 wire is kind of floating in midair but that doesn't matter we can really edit this we can edit this really quickly we can actually select the points and because this mesh is linked to the construction history of the the curve we can bring these down and then the curve will also come down so there you go. Um, we can just make this a bit better actually. Don't spend too much time on this. Let's just bring it down a little bit. Make this a bit curvier. And um, there's a bit of an issue here. Maybe we need to increase our subdivision axes um, or divisions. Okay, let's just make 75 for this example. Okay, that'll do. Let's just um, soften out all the edges firstly. And that's how we do it, guys. That's how we create the wire. And feel free to play about with this if you like, and it works pretty well. So the last thing I wanted to show you is how to create the hooks, the, the little hooks that keep the wire in place. And to do that, we're going to start off with a little torus again, make it kind of thick. All right, let's just rotate it 90 in the X and uh, delete half of it in a face mode. Yeah, that's about half of it in it. And go back to an object mode. I'm going to rotate it 90 degree, 180 degrees, if in the right axis. If I can do that, minus 90. Okay, so let's just um, close these off. So we can go to an edge, an edge mode. If I can select it, double click this, double click this, and we've selected both of the edges. If we go to fill hole, boom, we fill the hole. Okay, and just to make the geometry all connect together, we can right-click again. And is there a poke face here? I don't think there's poke face on this. Oh, there it is poke face. Okay, guys. So the face is poked in the middle, and now all the all the edges can join up to the middle. Another way we can do that is edit mesh and poke face. There it is. Okay. All right. So on one side of the torus, the um, the hook closes off and I'm just going to bevel this a couple of times. Okay, that's cool. And on the other side, it kind of joins with um, this bit. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to extrude this, bring it up. Okay, and 
I think I'll do this a bit differently from the one I created in Unity, but create a couple of edge loops, select these faces, extrude them, go to a world mode maybe, yeah that's cool, and drag it across, and we can just shrink the scale down to flatten this out. It's pretty flat now, okay. Um, okay, let's just delete these vertices or the faces. Sorry, guys, the face, these faces here, don't need them. And um, go to a vertex, drag it up so it's kind of connected to this. We want to shrink it down actually. Um, okay. select these, shrink them down. Okay, that's cool. Alright, let's just um, create another cylinder. Hold V, middle mouse drag to snap it to a vertex. Bring it in and I'm just creating a very simple lock mechanism here. Okay, so this can be the little lock. Okay, so that do. And for the last thing, all we need to do again is extrude a couple more faces down here to get the basic shape and just drag downwards and just uh, s scale out, flatten the, the edge. I'm going to make these a lot bigger so I can actually select it. Okay. That's our hook, guys. I mean, it's it's a bit different from the one I created in Unity, but it still does the same thing. We can, if we wanted to, we can smooth out these faces. Normal soften edge. Go back to an object mode and then simply drag it in place. Okay, let's group these two things or combine them. Mesh combine, and we can also snap the pivot in place. Okay, and simple as that, we can connect this like so. Okay, so the other thing I just wanted to mention before I finish this video is the little box shape here. The actual box looks very boring, it's just a cube, but to make it look a bit more smooth, a bit more interesting, we can select all the edges, apart from the bottom ones of course, and then right click and go to bevel edge, and all of a sudden the box looks a bit nicer, <laughs> with a nice bevel in it. Okay guys, um, feel free to change the offset, edit the offset a bit. Okay, if you wanted to make it a lot rounder, we can change the segments to two or three. Boom. But you know, you don't want to, these these take up a lot of polygons. We can we can actually smooth out the edges with with a texture, with like a with a bump map and stuff. So okay, so then this box would connect to the end of the wire, and then we're done. All right, guys. So I hope this has covered everything in what I've done in Unity. As you can see, the the locks if I just frame up on a lock object. It's a kind of different of I kind of made another cylinder here and connected that to the cylinder. But um I think you guys get the picture anyway. That's just the, the lock mechanism, the hook. Alright guys, um I'll probably text you this in the next video and I'll make some more creations for our game and show you some more nice little tricks in Maya and continue from there. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.